I told my dad my goal, and it, it's big because since he's left Haiti, he's never gone back, hmm. right? Wow. And he's just like, there's nothing there for me. I said, there is something there for you, dad. Mm. Because I told him, like, what I'm trying to build and my transparency and everyone, you know, I'm, I'm work, working to get to a point where people want to know my story. Yeah. And I want to show them the start of my story. The reality story. is people want to know now. Yeah. You just don't, you haven't put it out there yet. Yeah, they, good point. <laughs> well, that was my I, Gary V line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> this guy's one guy that's not afraid to be on film. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm TJ. Pleasure nice to meet you, TJ. I have people you? coming to the office, and we got cameras out, and they're all like, he's like nervous. I'm like, is this guy? Be a little used to it. Yeah, it's like, oh wait, what do I say? <laughs> we need to start like a group in Greenville of people like us yeah. that talk about these kind of things, that talk about like social media, that know who the heck Gary Vee is, mm -hmm. that have read all his books, that like listen to podcasts, that like, and start doing, like even if it's just a small group, we've been trying to figure out some type of concept of doing some video content around just like five or six dudes, like just sitting around like a cool looking table, like. We could go up to like one of the rooms, like in the loft hotel, or like, I or like spot for that. Yeah, or like yeah. anywhere, <laughs> like just like just sit around and just have seven camera angles. Yeah, and freaking just talk about. You could even like with the whole like idea of modern man. Like if they were all men, like that would be freaking incredible mm -hmm. content just to talk about like what it's like to be a man in 2018. Like that's the only reason I go to events now. Like I don't go to events to hear like I don't need to hear some speaker talk again. Mm -hmm. Like I've heard. I mean, we've heard it and read it all. Like when I went to New York and I met this guy Jason Ciano, and now like I'm doing all this stuff with it. like all these relationships that mm -hmm. like. We would have never met these people if not for social media. Yeah. Um, but we need to just like look at the calendar and set set one for the first. It'd have to be like a Friday or on the weekend because I'm usually never home. But well, for me, the uh, best days were Sunday. And it's funny you mentioned that okay. because literally be three weeks ago, um, me a friend of mine, Kobe, uh, he just signed with the modeling agency. Okay. He's trying to up his modeling and some other guys that work out. We he's reading the book, crushing it. Yeah, and um, he decided to start like a little like engagement group. Yeah, so we like send it up just to yeah. like each other's photos, and I came up with the idea. I was like, "Listen, I have a Nikon. I'm not a photographer by yeah. any means, but I messaged him and I messaged a couple other people. And I was like, Sunday, what are you guys doing? Come over. Mm -hmm. um, my apartment complex is West Village Lofts that okay. just opened up, and like photographers." Love this place. Yeah. If any, any yeah. time you need, we're, uh, dude, we're always. If you we're like, actually, we're supposed to do a photo shoot today. We didn't. Yeah. I mean, if you if you look it up, it, yeah, you can come to my place right now. If yeah, you want. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, talk about social media. Take a whole bunch of pictures mm -hmm. and stuff. The gym is awesome in there, and, and you can create like we like we could just do one, and you never know. Like you, could, it could turn into like some type of like regular thing where it's not necessarily like a podcast, but it's like a basically a show. Yeah. I mean, like a YouTube show. Where you come up with a clever name for it, and we'll pump it out. I mean, we—I mean, that's all we do. Sure, um, is that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I'd love to do that. And there's a couple other people um, that we could get involved um, as well. I just don't know how many people doing the kind of stuff we're doing at Greenwood. And so doing something like that, like that's a good business move to create a setting like that for people to talk. It's going to provide value, but it'll be fun. You mm -hmm. know, like it would be. That's like my whole thing, and we could do one down in um, in core in the in that gym. Mm -hmm. um, it's for, it's sick down there. I mean, like it's like the art and stuff is like, and that's what they're trying to do more of. Yeah, I'll pitch a show to Netflix tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. My idea would be, give me twenty four hours with different entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. and we'll make an episode. Out You've of seen it. leaders create leaders with Gerard, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, his. I mean, that's real <laughs> what they've done. Yeah. They're about to start recording season four. Um, so like, I'm yeah, at, that's just awesome. I'm at that point too. So like that idea of just having everybody and like you mm -hmm. said, like this being your leisure. Yeah. I'm at that point now where it's like, what do you want to do with your life? I want to share these conversations. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think everyone tells me, Ted, you were made to be in front of the camera. Yeah. Cool. Now. Let me be in front of the camera, but also get better than them saying like you were made to be in front of the radio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you got that face. You got yeah. that face for radio. Yeah. Yeah. No one told me that until <laughs> I was on camera. Yeah, no, but like that's. I mean, that's like that's the kind of those conversations. We struggle here because the content we're putting out, and obviously I'm incredibly biased, 
it's so good. Like the daily vlog, the stuff, if people really, really, really dive into it, like I mean, we're 86, every, today with the 86th episode. Today's coming, today's going to be 87. 80, 87. Oh, and nice. that's since January. And it's so, it's such good stuff. Like the amount of effort that goes into it, but it's not clickbaity. It's mm -hmm. not like, you know, and, and we've flirted back and forth with this line of like, doing stuff to potentially go viral or doing stuff to that people will get to click on it versus just doing what's the right like real stuff so that those that are are getting some real stuff out of it like yeah not having to go like you know drop watermelons off of some building and like some stupid like stupid mm -hmm. stuff that like get millions of views and all this stuff like that but one thing that um gary v he said um do you watch Daily V uh, with, with Gary? I haven't been caught up on all the yeah, episodes, but like I know it's, a man, lot Daily of Daily V is just like <laughs> the best. He just did one recently where it was just him and his team, like D-Rock and Babin and his videographers. Mm -hmm. They were just talking about like what's hitting, missing. And he t called it like, it was called something about like how they make the sausage, basically. Like yeah. that's what people really want to see, though, um, is how they make the sausage. Like what the thought process of going into like doing this type of pose versus we need to do this more and we need to do more Instagram lives with other people and this kind of stuff. And he was saying like with Daily V, which is his daily vlog, mm -hmm. which is ours, the Daily Bread. Um, he's like, if I never get another viewer of the Daily V, I'm completely okay with that because I'm doing Daily V for the recall. Mm. And when he said that, it was like freaking light bulb. Because I was like, jeez, I'm like, because I get so caught up in like how many likes, comments, shares, how many views, like all that stuff. Because mm -hmm. we're putting it out every day, and every day we're like, oh, this is the best one yet. And the next day we're like, oh, this is the best one yet. Mm -hmm. And then you look at it the next day, you're like, crap, it's only got like 1,500 views. Like I thought surely by now it had like 8,000. Yeah. And then one that you don't think is going to be great, like all of a sudden has like a ton. But realizing that, like, no, 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 like this is for five years from now. When I'll have five years mm -hmm. of episodes mm -hmm. to be able to recall as the evidence of the work that went into doing it the right way by providing value and not having to sell people and yeah. doing all these things and being able to recall like, hey, remember um, that one day when we were uh, sitting down with Ted in my office and we were talking about like getting together a group of people yeah. and like... Well, let's just say like six years from now all of a sudden like that's turned into this huge like modern man conference mm -hmm. you know <laughs> like things like that happen like you're in this modern man conference and now you're up on stage talking about like hey, hey tj like roll that footage yeah. it's like boom. boom and we're like hey we should get like a couple people like on a sunday like uh, uh, like like that's how we get like, like d-rock pull that up <laughs> yeah I mean, like literally that stuff is there forever yeah like, when we talk about like legacy and we talk about uh, all these things like having this footage and like I get deep on it because like for me it's like for my daughter and like for mm -hmm. my daughter's kids and like imagine if you were able to watch your grandfather Damn. having this conversation with just another dude yeah talking about this important like talking about some important stuff like if I could watch freaking a daily vlog with my grandfather I'd watch it every day you know I mean that that like that makes me emotional that strikes a yeah. string for me because my dad I'm the youngest of four yeah my dad's 75 76 years old actually yeah. he just turned 76 he my aunt just passed a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. my dad's the oldest mm -hmm. of the siblings so he mm -hmm. just buried his sister yeah. and um you know I'm serious with my girlfriend now I'm at the point where she's like you're so much like your dad and like she's like you have this whole focus yeah. every time my parents send me a card and everything it's like the man you've become yeah, she's yeah, like, yeah. everything with you is like building becoming a man yeah and I was like my kids, mm -hmm. I want as much of my dad and my mom mm -hmm. to be in me so my kids can learn who they are. Yeah. That. Yeah. So, like, everything I'm, like, building is really for the future. Yeah. You know? I mean, I'm at, like, I, I, there's been, I built my entire social media last year based off of Facebook Live mm -hmm. because of the fact that I liked that it, um, let me put my computer in. I liked the fact that it, Stay on there forever because like Instagram live at the time like when it first came out it went right away and go and then still now it's 24 hours but Facebook is there forever yep but like by doing these and I just knew that live like I knew the noise that was out there I knew if I did it live that that would be the way to show the transparency like you can only fake it for so long if you're live like, mm -hmm. and I'm like the reality is 15 years from now when she's you know 17 years old she's probably gonna be able to put in like a contact lens and sit passenger side mm -hmm. as I talk, as I have this conversation. 
where I'm talking about, where I'm like emotional and like getting teared up, talking about being away from her mm -hmm. and how I didn't want to leave on Sunday, but that I travel away for my family, not from my family. Yeah. And that all this stuff I'm doing is for her to build a lifestyle around her. The fact that she's literally probably going to like with all this VR and AR, like she's literally going to be able to like sit here, passenger side with her dad and hear him talk to her, whether I'm even on this planet or not. Yeah. So you never know what happens. It's amazing. Yeah. And this stuff will live on forever. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm almost like selfishly doing this thing 100% for me mm -hmm. as much as it is for everybody else. Just because like, I'm going to be that weird old man that's just like in his house when he's 90, <laughs> just watching like the Daily Bread Reminiscing. episode 12. Yeah. <laughs> My wife's going to like be just nuts by that point. I'm going to be like, honey, get in here. Watch me, watch when me and TJ did this freestyle battle in the car, <laughs> which was terrible, by the way. Um, Embracing discomfort, like that's our whole thing. It's like if you... Uh, if you seek discomfort, the world will deliver you pleasure. Mm -hmm. If you seek pleasure, the world will only deliver you discomfort. It's just like, yeah, it's the way it is. That's literally, so I've been trying to give nuggets every Friday. Yeah. And that's kind of like the thing I've been working on. This is me practicing. Yeah, for you said that earlier. You said something about seek pain, or so, you said something about seeking, like, yeah. trying to like put yourself in like difficult situations. Yeah, like I say, kind of like getting outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. You know, where um, um, I literally wrote a blog about kind of like fear and you know being uncomfortable going past your comfort zone yeah. your dreams are on the wind of the sky and you say what if you fall it's like oh but what if you fly hmm. you know that's so cool. kind of like you just got to jump yeah and kind of go for it yeah, yeah and i mean that's been everything good that's happened in my life has been from starting with something i'm not good at mm -hmm. you know just yeah. plain and simple and yeah we, we i did this one talk one time about um i just said i'm a fraud mm -hmm. i'm 100 i'm a fraud and talked about this idea that if you try to do something that you've never done before, but you're trying to do it with the confidence of knowing that you'll succeed in it, then that is a fraudulent environment to be in. Yeah. You've never done this before, but you're acting like you're going to crush it. Mm -hmm. So you're a fraud until you do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Until it becomes natural. <laughs> and then you're not anymore. I'm like, so you should constantly be like seeking fraudulent environments to be in because like that means you're doing something you've never done before like, yeah that's that that is a fraud but i think i mean that bleeds into everything you know and talking about for me with the modern man that's why i really liked lewis house's book uh the mask of masculinity oh, yeah. because he kind of attacks that a little bit mm -hmm. and and he has more of like a, a new school approach to it where you know i think the masculine the masculine features we have is what makes us attractive to women that's the whole thing with like the modern man, I don't think, I mean, there's a few examples, but like having like those good pinnacle mm. examples. Of, okay, I mean, who, I forgot. Who are your examples, by the way? I'm just, I'm just curious who are some of the examples that, you know, like if you had to build me a picture of like, this is the, this is about as, you know, if you made a compilation of like, this mm -hmm. is the greatest hits of men or something like that to aspire to or even inspire you, what does that look like? Wow. Top five, you know what I mean? Yeah, I've actually never been asked that. <laughs> and uh, like, off the top of my head, and I can't say every aspect of every single yeah, one. Yeah, it's, like it's like a pick and choose, like, you know? Like, like I, I like Terry Crews. Mm. Um, Terry Crews is pretty great. Yeah. He's, he's got, people underestimate Terry Crews. They only think of him as like, oh, he's like that. The guy in white chicks. Oh, oh yeah. mm -mm. no, he's way deep. Terry Crews, yeah. I like Terry Crews a lot. Um, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, um, in terms of just the that masculinity. Of the yeah, in terms of that masculinity. <laughs> Um, I like Kevin Hart too. I think there's a lot, of the, a lot of w roundedness of Kevin Hart that people don't realize how freaking genius. Yeah, he really is a renaissance man. He yeah. really is. There, I mean, he's he's the epitome of working hard, staying relevant, mm -hmm. and, and consistent. Yeah, and, and and really putting it in there. Um, Who else? Yeah, Kevin Hart's up there. I'm like running through all all these people right now, yeah. and it, he's not famous or anything. I say my dad. Yeah, I mean Ooh, just that's I mean that's good. that's really good. That, mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of men can't say that. Yeah, they can't mm -hmm. even come close to being able to say. Yeah, that. and it's my awareness of that is yeah. kind of like why I have like this whole like focus mm -hmm. is because like just the dynamic with my dad and my mom. My mom was the breadwinner, huh? Mm -hmm. But my dad held the keys. He drove the car. Mm. He handled the finances. My mom bought home the bread, but hmm. my dad also, his backstory: married, had two kids in Chicago, lost his job. 
came on hard times. His wife left him and took mm. the kids. Wow. My dad, distraught, you know, just trying to make ends meet, meets my mom, drives to New, he was living in Chicago at the time. My mom was living in New York, had a daughter. He left his life, packed his whole life in a little car and drove to hmm. New York. Actually, his car broke down on the way. <laughs> Mom cried for two days because they didn't have Facebook back then. They yeah. didn't have a cell yeah. phone. Didn't think he was going. She didn't think he was coming. <laughs> <laughs> it was two That's days crazy. late. But so he, he ends up marrying my mom, raised my older sister like his own, and together they had me. And that's why they're so old. But gotcha. I've watched my dad work all these different jobs. Yeah. All these d random different jobs. And also, like, you talk about waking up 5.50 in the morning, commuting into the city, mm -hmm. working all day, coming back, and doesn't get home to like 6, 6.30. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom, she had the same work ethic just to put us into Catholic school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? And then seeing that work ethic specifically for my dad coming and not only coming home, but on the weekends, handling the housework. Yeah. You know, loving my mom unconditionally. And I kind of just saw that day in and day out mm, as, a, awesome. as a well-oiled working that's machine. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, people don't get how very few people, and let's say how very few black men get to see, get to say that and see that. Agreed. Very few. Yeah. Very few. Crazy few. Yeah. Like, so yeah. That's and awesome. I remember my dad got emotional when uh, I moved into my one apartment. When I first came to Greenville, it was one bedroom, 650 square feet. feet. Uh, I was 26 years old, and he was like, your apartment at 26 is he moved he came to the states when he was 29 i believe when he where, came where did he come from uh from haiti. from haiti so from haiti he went to canada from canada went to chicago yeah. huh. and it was him and his siblings and it was 10 people eight adults two kids sharing a one bedroom apartment wow. and i'm a cubs fan because my dad would say he had to get the kids out of the house yeah and he'd go to the cubs game <laughs> um but he said at 26 i had a bigger space for myself than he had coming to the states that's my right. last contract i signed with fox he's like son i did good i said what do you mean he goes you're officially making more money yeah. than i've ever made in my life yeah there we go that's that's, but awesome. that's, the, that's like the point you know that's yeah, the yeah. Point. yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's and that's cool for them for like because there's there's men that would that would make them uncomfortable you yeah know? but like i love the fact like my dad's the same way like even now like he like he'll say stuff and i'll call him he's like yeah he's like just make sure that that you get um the building plans for that guest house you know he's like yeah. we're gonna need a place to stay take when, care. We, when yeah. we retire you can take care of us or he'll say like you know you got your videographer traveling around he's like but you know i'm pretty good at carrying bags and, you know, <laughs> yeah. if you need somebody to carry yeah. you need anybody to carry your equipment <laughs> and i'm like and he makes 300 grand a year like i mean like <laughs> like he does like he does well like he's God. i'm like this is not like this is like He's it's it's not like you're saying, yeah, it's not like you're like he's like freaking like mowing lawns. I told my dad my goal, and it, it's big because since he's left Haiti, he's never gone back, hmm. right? Wow. And he's just like, there's nothing there for me. I said, there is something there for you, dad. Mm -hmm. Because I told him like what I'm trying to build and my transparency and everyone, you know, I'm, I'm working to get to a point where people want to know my story. Yeah. And I want to show them the start of my story. The reality story. is people want to know now. Yeah. You just don't, you haven't put it out there yeah, they, good point. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was my Gary V line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> I would have wake up in the middle of the night. Like, oh, God. <laughs> like I would take it as far as like like I'm getting weird about this subject right now. Like I take the responsibility of telling you that like there is literally someone in Kansas right now that is literally sitting on their computer waiting to hear your story. Okay, like, I feel that like. With my stuff, like I literally feel as though someone that could hear Gary Vee, Tony Robbins, Andy Frisella, they could hear all these like great speakers, Zig Ziglar, like all the old schools, but hearing the same message through the, my context or through your context of your life mm -hmm. is the only way that's going to reach them at their level of where they're at. And they're literally waiting and will never be able to progress until they hear it. Like that's literally how I feel about it. Man, I got to get working. Yeah, I gotta get working. I told my dad, I said, we gotta go back to Haiti because I want to take a camera crew or yeah, take a camera, awesome. and I want to go to where he grew up because he talks about uh, Cap Haitien, Northern Haiti. He say how in the mornings they'd have an orange or a bottle cap. Him and all his friends they'd go where the sewers are and they would play soccer. And sometimes they'd only have one orange, and they would get pissed if some kid Somebody scored like it. the first five minutes. <laughs> Because then the game's done. <laughs> like, it's a game to one. It's in the That's sewer. Funny. We can't get it back. <laughs> but, but, like, 
So like knowing my dad came from that. Yeah. And in one generation from, you know, yeah. coming from Haiti, coming to the States, raising a son mm. who is sitting on the anchor desk at Fox Carolina in a mid to yeah. major size market in the United States. Yeah. That's, um, that's just one generation. You mentioned passing the torch. Mm -hmm. I was like, because I have this torch, mm -hmm. it would be irresponsible and a disservice yeah. to my my parents for the sacrifices they made to kind of just settle yeah. and stop. I need to keep running with this torch. Mm -hmm. So when I pass it, that momentum yeah. keeps going because they sacrificed too much for me to be like, oh, hey, here's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not the case. Dude, if you want to go film that, we'll we'll take the crew and we'll go down and do it. Yeah. I'm so down to nice. do that. Right, that'd be, oh, Dan that'd be so good from No Hook Media. Get No Hook Media. I'd be on. I'm down. <laughs> because we're not selling anything. Like this. Like, yeah. We literally just want to help. Um, we just want to tell good stories. Yeah, Jeez. man. You know, yeah, we need to set up something to do. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely think of some people and we'll try to nail down like a Sunday or. Um, yeah. I usually leave like late. I usually don't leave till like late Sunday night. Um, That's perfect. Like, I usually go to bed like, Sunday night. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so we do like like early evening. On a Sunday, just record it and I think it'll be good. Yeah, I think that'll be awesome. I mean, sure. and you've seen my place, so I, I'm yeah more than happy to have you guys come. We can sit down and yeah, it'd be cool. And kind of just kind of chop it up like we did here. Yeah, and, and everything. I think people get uh, that's the stuff that people like. Those organic conversations are where I think people. That's where I get. That's why I like Daily V so much because it's those organic conversations that are just happening. You're just getting to participate in mm -hmm. um, by listening versus someone like getting in front of you and saying today we're going to talk about adversity yeah you know the top three ways to get through adversity and then just hear a bunch of dudes talking about adversities they've been through you're like yeah. oh that's how you do it what's up guys if you have not yet done so please like my Facebook page, then next to the like button, click following, which will bring a drop down. And when it says in the news feed, click see first. This will ensure that you will always see the content that we're pushing out. The last thing that we want to have happen is for us to put out content that you actually want to see, but you don't. So make sure that you hit see first and we'll see you next time.